All right, let's take a look now at Edward Manet's take on the odalisque subject. I'll keep the traditional Renaissance one in the left corner here so you can compare them. All right, so here is Manet's take on the odalisque. This is certainly different. There are a number of things shocking about this work compared to the more traditional painting on the last slide. Firstly, let's look at the model stare. Unlike the first painting, this woman is very much aware of our presence, and she is staring at us in a confrontational manner. Secondly, she's not entirely nude. Because she is wearing accessories and high heels, she appears to be a bit more seductive and less like a goddess. This woman is not a goddess at all. In fact, she was a real person. And when this picture was unveiled at the Salon in 1863, a lot of the men in attendance recognized who she was. These men could attest to the fact that the model in the painting was absolutely not a goddess, and she was a member of the lower working class. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So now that we know that this woman is not a goddess, but a lowly working human woman, let's look at this cool thing that Manet did. Through art, Manet has elevated this woman. He has given her status, not only by painting her portrait, which is an activity usually reserved for the rich, but he has also created a fictional life for her in which um, she has her very own servant. This little act where Manet has sort of slapped the upper class in the face by allowing a lowly peasant to be like a goddess immortalized by art, um, this made Manet sort of a hero. People who had never paid attention to art before suddenly found themselves very interested in the art scene, and art finally became a thing for everyone to enjoy, not just the rich and the powerful. Um, so now that the subject rule has been thoroughly broken by the realist, there is only one more rule left to break, the craftsmanship rule. The Impressionists are the artists who dared to break that rule. Once artists were free to choose whatever subject they wanted for their art, thank you, realists, artists began to experiment with new ways for painting. The Impressionists, like Edgar Degas seen here, painted scenes very quickly, hoping to capture just the essence of the atmosphere with brush strokes that indicated light and shadow. They used painting techniques that would make academic painters shudder, like the technique used here to create the texture of the highlights and shadows on the dancers. This is called scumbling, where the, um, where the artist uses his brush or even a palette knife loaded up with paint and they just drag it over the textured surface of the canvas and they do not go back and blend in that texture. If you've ever watched Bob Ross, he is a huge fan of scumbling. But the idea of letting brush strokes show was a really new one and it would have made a lot of art critics want to throw up at first um, because art, remember, was supposed to be perfect and realistic. And that used to mean no brush strokes. However, as we start to turn toward the modern era, people became quite fond of seeing the evidence of handmade work, um, like what you see here, the brush strokes. It's nice to feel that something was made by human hands. So the beauty of brush strokes became not only accepted, but highly acclaimed. All right, so as we move on here, now that both of the rigid classical art rules have been broken, there are no more rules to be broken in 20th century art, right? Mm, wrong. In 1917, Marcel Duchamp, a French man who moved to New York to escape the turmoil of World War I, broke the unwritten rule of art. He broke the unwritten rule that artists had to make things. This piece of artwork, which is a store-bought urinal titled Fountain, was the first rule breaker that really shook up the art world and paved a glorious path for future artists. Go to the next slide to learn about the, the urinal that, pardon my French, pissed off the art world. <laughs> See what I did there? 